Good afternoon. Welcome to the last part of our conference. And we will start with a topic that was uh, reflected already several times, electro mobility. We have Philip Ventura from Leaf Technologies invited for that topic. He will speak to us what's the role of electromobility in new energy sector. We have also electro vehicles represented here uh, quite a lot. And electromobility is a popular topic. There are different camps of supporters or opponents. Therefore, what is our future? Will there be a future where it will be also used in decentralized energy, electromobility? Thank you for the invitation. Let me complete the spectrum of uh, presentations with uh, my title, Role of Electromobility in the New Energy Sector. And I will try to give answers to several questions that were already formulated here. Let me start with what's Electromobile as an appliance, what's Electromobile as a smart battery, and what's the concept of the so-called second life of batteries. To present myself, I'm representing here the LEAF Technologies Company that's being active in a certain interface between new energy and electromobility since 10 years. We've uh, carried out many theoretical studies. We are also uh, executing pilot projects where we try to launch new technologies in practice. And I will make you acquainted with some of those projects at the end of my presentation. Before starting with electromobility issues or topics, I will give you a couple of figures on the market. From our Czech Republic perspective, we may see, we may feel that uh, Europe is playing a rock and roll, but uh, it's not right. China is the main player, both in terms of batteries and production, it was already described here, but also in terms of electromobility. In the left part of the chart, if you consider the relative values there, European mark, Europe uh, considers more than 10% of electro vehicles, a similar figure in China. But if you look at the cake chart on the right, in China, the number is by half bigger. And we are speaking about purely battery. Uh, vehicles, not about uh, hybrid. We can speak about uh, the objectives for the next 10, 20 years, whether they are too ambitious. But as a matter of fact, it's clear that electromobility is here. So not its existence, but its implementation and the speed of it should be considered now. Projections are illustrated here through the eyes of an electro electric vehicle producer. Here we have a Škoda company chart published two weeks ago at Electro Mobility Forum. It says that on the European market in 2028, the Škoda company wants to sell the same number of, uh, of uh, classical fuel cars as electrical cars. The intersection will happen three years late, three, four years later, but once you buy a new car 10 years later, you will see more electric cars in catalogs of producers than combustion cars. Electrical part of the story starts with a single calculation. When we look at what's the average consumption of an average bigger personal electric uh, car, if it uh, drives 5,000 kilometers per year, the annual consumption is uh, 0.2 kilowatt hours per kilometer. If we multiply it by the number of electric cars, something as 20,000 per 
in the Czech Republic, if it's 1 million, it corresponds to 3% of the consumption in the Czech Republic. So even quite a high number of electric vehicles does not represent a big load from the point of view of energy. And if we speak to energy experts, they will tell you clearly, practically all, that energy demands of electric cars will not be a problem. The reason is that the total cumulative figure is not as big as that. And the second argument, in order to explain it, let's go through this slide that should help you to understand that if you have a, an electric car, your system of uh, recharging and your way of using it differs markedly from a combustion car. If you have a combustion car today, you drive, if there is a signal your fuel is not sufficient, you come to the low, uh, to the nearest a filling station, you fill up your tank and you continue. The electric car makes a different situation. There is so-called fast charging, recharging, which is something as 20% of the overall recharging. Some figures uh, speak even about 10%. Most of recharging is through low recharging, or so-called AC, which is abbreviation for the technology. Every uh, electric vehicle can be recharged slowly or fast and this slow recharging means that some 90% of the time your car is at rest and you use it some 5% of the of time when you drive it and this 5% of time uh, remaining is the time you recharge your car, you connect it with the grid, and therefore you do not do not need such a high output, and you can adapt your time of recharging to the times where there is not a big load on the grid, or if when your household uh, consumption is not excessive. So from the point of view of capacity of uh, distribution and grid wires, it's quite a sensitive way of recharging. Practically, we should differentiate between fast and slow recharging in terms of whether it's a public one or household one. If you have your own garage where you can do your own recharging or you have a rented uh, recharging place, this is the cheapest way how you can recharge. But then you can use the public AC recharging spot if you live uh, if you don't have your own garage uh, if you live in a residential house you have a flat there then there are small sockets and rechargers we will see it in a while there's a pilot project in Prague but this is a certain obstacle barrier if you do not have your own recharging place. It's a bit difficult if you depend on public, usually fast recharging a place, which is the most expensive method and also quite complicated. There are recharging stations of 150 kilowatt up to 350, but most of electric cars are not able to get connected to. If you get to 300 kilowatts, you may recharge your car within 10-15 minutes and then you will not be bound to dream about uh, a high megawatt recharging stations. These are rather for vessels or lorries or trucks. But anyhow, the distribution network is uh, getting larger and larger. In the places you want to have recharging locations, such as by highways or in the cities, there's quite a demanding, uh, uh, there is quite a high demand on public grid, and in addition to that, 
a car connected to the grid, it may not increase demands on capacity and you may even use it as a certain battery and as a certain contribution to the grid. Smart batteries, smart charging rather, this is the, uh, an overview of uh, abbreviations, smart charging can be divided into and uh, unidirectional smart charging, which is the cheapest one. If you come at home at, at 8 p.m., you need to leave at 8 a.m. the next morning, so you have 12 hours for recharging for a certain distance. If you put the output at full, you have the recharging done in three hours, and you do not care at what time exactly. If you pass the information to a control system, and the system may be again either highly sophisticated one or not so much sophisticated, you may reach a situation you do not have to enlarge the capacity of your uh, security and uh, you can have it at the lowest cost. I will show you the pilot project in a while. Then there is bi-directional smart charging, B2H, depending the battery works, it's either vehicle to home or vehicle to building. Anyhow, it's always vehicle to something, and it means that uh, besides ch recharging the battery, discharging is possible as well. If you imagine a car at home, vehicle to home charging system, if you have a small uh, uh, shut of, uh, of uh, the output, you can overcome the problem. In Fukushima, uh, they worked on it uh, three years ago. There are first uh, projects uh, incorporated into some electric car producers. The others will incorporate it very soon as well. The most sophisticated uh, way on the very last line, V2G, means that the battery in a car will be connected uh, uh, through a more advanced complex system to the grid and in here we have more complex views on battery systems and quite a small number of batteries in an uh, electric car can help to balance the grid. You need quite a sophisticated aggregation system for that, but they are already available or they are getting to exist such systems. Specific examples so that you know at what stage the market is today. This is one of the pilot projects we participate in. It will go down to 2024. The aim, there are several aims. When I start with the photograph, with the black box with a, a mast above, this is a public lighting mast. Down there, there is technology, some technological elements, and a small box above, this is a typical wall box. The plan is that those uh, wall box boxes, according to the general plan of uh, uh, transport infrastructure development in Prague, there should be uh, many in Prague by 2030. This box has two outlets for two parking places, I mean two cars that can get connected to. Uh, the, the aim is to test a smart IT system that will pass the information about a given car through a system of distribution grid so that the recharging <coughs> is done in a smart way so that even a large number of recharged uh, vehicles represent a small load on distribution grid. And besides pre-distribution, there is also Unico participating in the system, providing uh, this uh, uh, management system. Also, Škoda Auto Company is participating 
because at the very last stage of the project, besides monitoring uh, the communication car, uh, recharger, distributor and uh, grid, above all that, we also examine the system from the point of view that Škoda Factory announces that from 2025 it will ask for uh, this functionality to be prepared already in the <coughs> cars. <coughs> the last of the topics I wanted to cover is the topic of so-called second life of batteries. You may come across this term already. The concept is what uh, is being visualized here. Battery, after some years, when it loses a part of its accumulation capacity in uh, in practice, it means lower uh, drive distance before the next recharging. This battery can be put into a stock place where it can be subject to installation within an industrial park in order to help the grid, in order to help the output and in this mode it can continue servicing for next several years until uh, its capacity is totally minimal and then recycling is put in place. It's very reasonable. It makes sense because uh, the sustainability of the batteries is improved and uh, even economically because the battery when dismantled from the car will be much cheaper for the first uh, use it will be <coughs> uh, part of the cost will be covered and in the second uh, cycle the rest of it the world has advanced so that on the left you can see a battery that is used in ENIAC and on the right it is also a battery to be put in in, in ENIAC. Only in on the left you can see the drawers or the shapes of drawers which are arranged uh, in the chassis. Uh, before uh, the batteries were positioned uh, under the seats and in all uh, places where it was possible, but uh, now it should be different because there is a place which uh, is fit for that and uh, only a few screws uh, are enough to fix it. So once you have to replace it, you can use it. If you have it uh, in a battery uh, storage, it doesn't matter, or a repository, it doesn't matter if uh, the battery is already uh, uh, has, has lost a part of its capacity because uh, it is compensated for. Uh, if uh, later in the life of the battery uh, <clears throat> you want to charge the car, it takes a longer time or it takes more time to ignite the engine and so on. So, it means that this is a moment where the battery, if it is put in the repository, can still serve for, uh, for, for a period of 10 years. This is a picture from Prague 10. There is a charging hub with about 10 parking places with slow charging and one for the fast uh, uh, <clears throat> charging and uh, there is a part which is composed of the uh, second life batteries which is and it serves as a backup for the peak times when there is a car that uses a lot of it it can be uh, complemented from that as to this project, in the basic regime, it is also used for peak shaving. In the more advanced regime, which we will be speaking about perhaps in one or two years, across the street there are two blocks of flats and we would like to simulate next time how such a uh, battery storage can be used as a community 
storage, a power storage is uh, assumed that it might there might be a community within 10 years that would use it and a battery could be uh, used for that. So what we will need is the legislation. These are the pilot projects which can uh, uh, unveil some of the uh, possibilities which are ahead and they can be used as an example for the legislators who can uh, provide then for the uh, legal aspects of it. So in conclusion, there are three points. The first point is the answer to the question whether there will be enough electricity for electric uh, vehicles. There will be enough for two reasons. The volume of electricity is not that big and the charging of electromobiles is relatively uh, uh, fair to the grid, not exhausting it too much. If batteries are properly integrated, could on, uh, on the contrary, could help the grid, just like any other batteries as we heard about them today, then after the electromobiles death, uh, obviously it will depend uh, on many aspects, including uh, the life cycle of the battery, but uh, when its capacity drops uh, under a certain limit, the battery can still be used in the, in the stationary battery uh, um, storage site. Thank you, Philip, for, for your presentation. I might have a practical question. You spoke about the ways of using uh, uh, or charging the V2X or whatever, whether it be a home or a grid. It must be doing something with the battery because charging and discharging, it is uh, guaranteed for a certain number of cycles by the manufacturer. Won't there be a problem that uh, the manufacturers uh, won't uh, guarantee uh, the uh, charging cycles if it is used in a certain regime? Can it be a physical problem for, for, for the battery? Is it feasible? The good news is that as a user, you need not ask the Chinese manufacturer of the battery about this, because it is uh, the uh, the manufacturer of the car who is uh, uh, who carries the guarantee. It is a good question, though, because uh, the modern types of batteries, uh, that has to be said, there is no such modern battery that would have been in a car for eight years and we would see how it behaves now, what is, for instance, the uh, MBTF or uh, what uh, is the capacity, because so they haven't been so long. We have modern uh, batteries, but they haven't run for eight years. So the technological question is still there. But I would rather be an optimist because there are many places where batteries are tested in laboratories and at universities and uh, our colleagues seem, uh, uh, seek to simulate the cycles and that's what they do in China as well. And uh, as it is, the, today's batteries can last longer than we thought. They don't deteriorate that much and if anything affects the degradation or degrading, it is the fast charging or discharging. If we speak about the V to G and about the second life of battery, as opposed to uh, the regime in which it operates in a car, it is uh, uh, different and the battery is heavily uh, loaded in the car operation. But uh, the expectations are that in, the, uh, uh, in other regimes it should last longer and that it should be all right, even for the guarantees. Another question will be associated with what is frequently asked about by the by the uh, uh, the audience again a polarization 
uh, polarizing question, hydrogen as opposed to electromobile. What are the pros and what are the cons? Just briefly, I will use the words of our colleagues from the Ministry of Industry and Trade. We had a meeting two weeks ago and they are people who are in charge of technological neutrality and uh, they also work with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the subsidies uh, from the EU and so on. And we uh, thought, and they said that they thought that the batteries would be for smaller cars, but the uh, bigger cars, trucks and so on, would rather be used. Uh, the the, the uh, hydrogen would rather be used. However, they, however that was five years ago, and uh, nowadays. For small cars, as we believe, hydrogen will have no say. Ah, more than a half of the trucks that uh, that uh, uh, run on the Czech uh, roads don't go any further than 300 kilometers. So it's for the uh, for the internal transport. So it could also be used for them. However, as to hydrogen, there are advocates of hydrogen. Uh, the positive thing is that the charging is much faster. However, there's still a long way to go for hydrogen in terms of the uh, energy conversion effectiveness. And then the charging infrastructure is very complicated to uh, prepare. It will uh, take a long time. If we speak about hydrogen, we should speak about green hydrogen and how will it be produced? How will it be produced in winter or how shall we import it from Spain? I'm not saying that the door is closed, that it will, that it will never happen, but uh, the batteries driven cars, it is available and uh, it's still improving. So, while a part of the local fleet can be substituted for by the uh, by the EV uh, for hydrogen, we will have to wait longer. Another question. I think the motivation for the question is the concern about uh, the places where you have the uh, housing developments and where you have uh, where you may have as many as 150 cars that will connect to the grid at one time will uh, the grid sustain it will it, will it uh, carry the load there must be some uh, concept for the high densely high uh, highly densely uh, populated uh, uh, areas. I think that Mr. Ellis, the manager of PRE, said that the large quantities of cars which exist in some uh, urban areas can be predicted. And the distributor also has uh, the predictions, so they cannot be uh, scared by uh, these quantities or these uh, densities because they know it. If, for instance, you uh, replace uh, all the wiring, the, ca the cables which lie underground, and uh, if you know what the capacity or what the output or the, the necessary output will be, they will uh, provide for that. So I don't think that will be a threat. It might be that in a specific street uh, they will want this uh, uh, charging pole and uh, it won't be possible to put it there for some specific local reasons, but in general it shouldn't be a problem. However, it may be that people will uh, actually uh, buy cars, electric cars, if they know that a charging pole is near to uh, where they live. I think that there are still many people who have a garage or a place which is dedicated to them and where the charging uh, uh, pole or the wall box can be placed and uh, then they compare the uh, the costs uh, for the purchase of the 
EV or uh, they can do all kinds of calculations and uh, by the way there's a porter a portal on uh, the uh, electromobility website where you have a calculator and you can do the comparison of the costs and of the operational costs but if a charger is not near you should rather wait so it is better to wait for the time where it's really uh, next door I think that in Prague it might be a problem at certain places. There are plans, but it is a matter of a couple of years. Thank you for your time and for the presentation, and we will go ahead. The next topic.